have a good day. I'll see you get home. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm just looking forward to sharing the experience with Don and John. And uh, they've already been sharing a little bit about how old they were and some of their story already. Um, and them experiencing DC. Um, Don hasn't been before. And John, it was 68? 68. 68 since he was in DC. So I'm just looking forward to being there and being part of the experience with them. The different things I've read about the wall, I've had to stop reading once in a while. Uh, because it, it, you would think that it's not going to affect you, but it, it, you just reading about it in the books does. So I'm sure that when I get there to see the wall, it's going to be the same. Way. It's like when they play the national anthem or taps. Play taps like at my father's funeral, my uncle's funeral. It, it, it's hard not to break down. Tell me about this, this bird behind you and what kind of relationship you might have with aircraft like this. Well, when I went in country, uh, I had been drafted and uh, I was assigned 101st Airborne. Not jump qualified, not to be, you know, any of that, but they were short, warm bodies and this was what we used for uh, our tactical uh, work. They were. Uh, expeditious and dropping us in places where you wouldn't normally be and I'd volunteered for recon as well as a mini cav air unit so we were air mobile theoretically but a lot of times it seemed like we get dropped in and then it wouldn't work out that we get out so we did a lot of a lot of ground pounding and when I got wounded course they call in a medevac and that is these birds right here. They drop us in areas that were hot or try and get us out of areas that were hot and uh, they saved my life. Uh, I was drowning on my own blood and uh, took shrapnel through the throat. Uh, they got me on there and got me into a field hospital and uh, I'm not the only one. These things saved a number of people over there. I think this is amazing. Um, I was in the Air Force from 1976 to 1980, and um, it was an interesting time after Vietnam and during women's lib, so it was quite an interesting place. So this is wonderful that we're being showcased. What would it be to you to be on this honor flight today? It's very exciting and very touching. I'm very patriotic. I joined in 1975 through 1978 the U.S. Navy um, and I was actually one of the first women to be put on ships to see how that was going to work. So um, unbeknownst to me they were going to send me to a dry dock. I could have gone to radio men's school or ET school. I said no I don't want to do that and they said okay we've got the place for you. So they sent me to a dry dock where you overhauled submarines, sandblasted, operated a 10-ton crane and when it came time to get my stripes, they said, no, we're not yet, we're not ready yet for you to decide if we want you to be a bosun's mate. So they said, pick something else. So I became a draftsman and I left as a petty officer, third class draftsman after my husband wanted to get out and I probably would have stayed in because my whole family's military. He was, he, he, he didn't come back. He knew he wasn't going to, and he didn't come back, and he didn't. I couldn't help him. They wouldn't let me go out with him, and he never made it back that night. And it's been oh, 50 years, 50 years next month. 
still. And I never thought I'd get to see this thing, but this is amazing. This is totally amazing. Yep. You got a little piece of him with yes. you now. Yes. Yeah. I also have his wedding ring. I, I'm I'm really uh, struggling with a, a lot of mixed emotions right now. In a way, it's closure. Uh, in a way, it's gratitude. It's it's gratitude for all the effort that went into by a good number of people to create such a, a fantastic tribute to all all these 58,000 guys that were not fortunate enough to come back home. And so I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, just at a, other than that, kind of at a loss for words right now. Did anything come to mind when you were first walking down this way? Were you wondering how you would react to the wall? Um, I knew how I'd react. It's just, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking to see this. And uh, the families are just devastated by what happened. There's a lot of names on this wall. The kids weren't even 20 years old, I bet. And that's, that's not right. Is there any healing at all in the fact that millions of people come here to pay tribute? Oh, absolutely, especially after the way Vietnam veterans were treated when they came back from the war. Um, I think this is a big tribute to those, those guys. Dave Schnover and Terry Moreland. What's the symbolism of the, the cigar? Terry always smoked a cigar whenever he could. And uh, Dave Snover, he had just been in, in, the, in the country with us for just for a few weeks. Didn't really know him that well. But uh, he was one of the 23 guys that got into the big firefight. And he was one of the two guys killed that day. So I recognize his name too. A cigar well earned on his part as well. Yeah, I think so. Very nice tribute. I think so. It's something that uh, I can do for him. And it'll be picked up and thrown away later, but you know, it's, it doesn't matter. I recognize these two guys. That's what's important to me. Uh, my brother, Eugene Wilson, uh, he was shot down June 6, 1968. Give me a minute. Near Quang Tree, Providence, in Vietnam, and the letter my mom got, the report said that Eugene got aboard the helicopter about two o'clock in the afternoon, and they were searching for some more Marines that had gotten lost, and this was called Operation Cheyenne, and. The helicopter received small arms fire and was shot down. And in the crash, Eugene died from the crash. And the helicopter became completely engulfed in flames. And they tried to get everybody out, but there was not enough time. And I guess with all the ammo and the jet fuel and everything, the helicopter exploded and rolled down the side of a mountain. And that's, that's the report that they gave my mom, the letter in the report said. And he went to Vietnam, he went to, got to Vietnam April the 22nd, I believe, of 68. And I had orders to go to Vietnam. And they did send two brothers at the same time. And I have survivor's guilt because I didn't have to go. I didn't have to go over and I, I served my time in Germany. And I felt guilty ever since people tell me that I shouldn't feel the way that I do, but I do. I feel guilt. And I, I, I feel that, and like I'm feeling now emotional, I felt that way all my life. I, I, feel, I felt this way all of my life. And some days are better than others, but occasionally I'll, I'll break down and tear up, but I try to hide it, not let anybody know about it, but that's the way I really feel. Is there any healing on days like today when people are saying thank you because you did serve and your family has sacrificed so much, is there any healing happening here for you? Uh, yes, it does. Started being his newest, he uh, um, 
he uh, told me that he was a veteran and then we were talking about that he never uh, was on the honor flight and he said he would go and but he didn't have anybody to go with and so I said I would go with him. <laughs> so that's how this all started. You know on the Korean War monument, those faces, they don't know who they are or anything, but the only thing you can really depict on that is that their airplanes with uh, their troopers coming down. That represents our outfit that was in there. That's what you did. That was a 187 Airborne. It's called Rocket Sound. Japanese uh, gave that name to us back in 1948. That means literally uh, falling down umbrella. Uh, if you ask anybody in the Airborne, even now today, they're, they're in the 101st Airborne now. Uh, they're recognized as one of the elite. Airborne, the rocket plane. So a lot of pride for you seeing that, that your work and the work of those that you are oh, with yeah. is honored here. Yes, sir. Every time I come here, it's unbelievable. I, I see something that I didn't see before. And I really, especially really enjoyed this. Uh, it's different than other two times I came by myself with, for the family. I'm with people that been there and done that. I had a good day, fantastic. Okay. I'd do it again. It was fantastic. It's the experience of a lifetime. I've been at Ridgecrest for 34 years, so I saw the beginning of the honor flights. And with our residents, it's just, it's just a really neat experience. Do you have one moment in particular that stands out to you that touched your heart? I had a Vietnam veteran, and so it was kind of cool to see when we went to that memorial. I also had an Air Force veteran who was totally excited about going to that one. So, in the scale of one to ten for you in this experience, I mean, how do you, how do you relate? Twenty-five. 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 Why, so, why so it, was, like it, so it was just such a neat, neat, neat day. And just to see these guys, and it's so organized, and everybody helps everybody, and it's just, it's just a fantastic experience. I'm a nurse in independent living. So what does this mean to you to be here today? It's awesome. I've smiled all day. I just can't help it. We've had a good time. Fantastic. Good time. So you had the honor of traveling with a World War II veteran? Mm-hmm. It's like my dad. My dad was on the first one in 2008 and I had no idea what it was about, so I'm pretty honored. It's been a great experience, and I'm surprised by the response from all the people that have met us. It's been pretty cool. Makes you want to cry. <laughs> it's very cool. I might do it again. The veterans' faces, every time they saw the memorials and the monument, it was just over overwhelming and an honor to take them. What do you think today? surprise you? Did you know what to expect? Did you have an idea? Everything surprised me. Everything surprised me. It was such a joy.